Hello, this is Chaudhry Mahmoud Anwar. Uh, today I'm going to tell you how to detect multicollinearity. Multicollinearity is a condition in which uh, your regressors are highly correlated to each other. Mm, therefore, due to this high correlation, their standard errors are large enough. And although the estimators are blue, mean best a linear unbiased estimator, but due to the larger errors, due to the larger standard errors and variances and covariances, the calculated estimators are inaccurate and imprecise. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, multicollinearity, then you can read my article data health assurance in social and behavioral sciences research okay how you can mm, detect multicollinearity of your regressors if uh, overall r score of your regression model is uh, very high but your t values are low then it means your regressors are suffering from multicollinearity and the other way is uh, to analyze your correlation matrix and check the correlations among uh, your regressors. And if they are highly correlated, then your data is suffering from multicollinearity. Other statistical detection methods are the calculation of variance inflation factor, tolerance and condition indices. You can calculate all these statistics in SBSS. If the value of variance inflation factor is greater than 10 or 4 and the value of tolerance is less than 0 0.10 and the value of condition index is above 15 then your data is suffering from multicollinearity so how to deal with multicollinearity there are a few directions available in this article mm, what you can do you can drop the multicollinear variables, all the variables having high correlations with each other. And you can transform the variables. Uh, you can collect new data, which is a very hefty process. Uh, you can reduce collinearity in polynomial regressions and orthogonal polynomials. You can also apply principal component and re rich regression to your existing data. So there are various methods. Uh, today I am going to tell you how to deal with multicollinearity by using exploratory factor analysis. So here we are with our SPSS uh, data sheet. Mm, this is the variable view. Uh, let us suppose we have uh, 15 regressors and all the regressors are suffering from multicollinearity. All or some regressors are suffering from multicollinearity. What we can do to deal with these multicollinear regressors, I will conduct an exploratory factor analysis. Now, see, uh, I'm going to analyze, then dimension reduction, and then factor. Put all these regressors into variable section. Click on descriptives. Click on initial solution. Continue extraction. Select principal components. Unrotated factor solution. And screen plot. Select eigenvalue should be greater than one. Continue. Rotation should be very max. Continue. Variables, then you can save your regression weights as new variables. I don't want to save here for this now. Options. Continue. Options. If you want to apply list wise, pair wise, or mean substitution method for your missing data, then you can apply here. Continue. Now click OK. Here's your SPSS output. 
And look here, uh, 15 regressors, LGO1 to LGO15. And these are their extractions, their commonalities. Well, you can see that uh, four components have been identified having uh, eigenvalue greater than one and the overall four component solution is explaining 74.109% of the variance, which is of course greater than 60%. Uh, it's a very good solution. Let's have a look at script plot. One, two, three, four, four components have uh, value greater than one, and remaining have eigenvalues uh, less than one. So these are excluded from the analysis. Let's go to a rotated component matrix. Uh, now it's, it's this is the very critical part where you have to select the most suitable variables are related to each of the component. For this you have to the variable with highest loading and lowest cross loadings. For component one, for component one, let's say LGO 1.895 and uh, you can see for component one, LGO1 is uh, LGO1 has uh, a loading value of 0.9.895. LGO1 has a loading value of 0.895, which is the highest value in all the variables loaded on first component. Second, 0 0.806, 0 0.817, 0 0.837. Uh, LGO11 has the highest value 0.831 among all the variables loaded on component 2. Okay, LGO11. For component 3, let's have a look. 0.849 is 0 0.861 is highest. LGO8. So LGO8 has been loaded on third component of the solution having highest value 0.861 and negligible cross loadings. For the fourth component, uh, let's have a look. Mm, 0 0.826. 0 0.826 is the highest uh, loading and LGO LGO13 has been loaded on fourth component with negligible cross loadings. So uh, what does it mean? It simply means that now you have uh, four variables LGO1, LGO11, LGO8 and LGO13. So it simply means that these four variables are representing the 15 variables who were suffering from multi-collinearity problem. Therefore, you can replace those 15 highly correlated variables with these four variables which are uncorrelated to each other. So this is the best way you can deal with multi-collinearity problem by using exploratory factor analysis. So the conclusion is that you have replaced your 15 highly correlated variables, regressors suffering from multi-collinearity, and you have replaced them with four variables. Those are uncorrelated to each other. This is how you can handle multi coronality among your regressors by using exploratory factor analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching this video and I believe this video would be helpful for you.